Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about menu systems in VR in Unreal. And as you can see, I've got a system set up right here in front of me. I already have a blueprint that has a test menu integrated into it. And I'm just going to quickly show you a demo of what this menu can do, how I can interact with it with my VR controllers. This is the kind of menu that you might use for a startup screen, something that's going to be uh, persistently on screen in the scene that your users are going to interact with, maybe to set some settings, maybe to launch your first level. Uh, if you want to see uh, a different kind of menu, if you want to see a more like in context menu that you might use in game, check out the virtual reality template that comes with Unreal Engine. And there's a menu in that template that can be toggled on and off in game. It attaches to one of your hands and it can be uh, interacted with, uh, you know, in an in game situation. Our menu is more for something, as I mentioned, like a start screen. All right, let's take a look at interacting with this menu. Here we are interacting with the menu. You look down at my two hands here and I can see that I have laser pointers coming out of both of my hands. They are coming from approximately the, uh, the tip of my index fingers. And uh, the difference between the two is with the right hand, you can see the laser pointer always exists regardless of where it is po uh, pointing. And with the left hand, the laser pointer comes into visibility when we are pointing at the menu. When we point away, that laser pointer goes away. That's a configurable aspect of my system. So I could make it so that both of the pointers are always on. I could make it so that both of the pointers need to be pointed at the widget. And the other thing that's configurable about my system is the colors of the two lasers and their sort of spherical cursors at the end. And the way I've set this system up right now is that if we are pointing at a particular menu item and we pull one of the two triggers, it just plays a sound. So let's see how this was implemented. First thing first, we're in a test level. It's just an empty level. And you can see that I've got something called BP test menu added to the scene. And so this is a blueprint based on an actor. And so it has a location within the scene. It can be moved around. I put it fairly close to the player start so that my player will be facing it at the beginning of the level. And you can see on this BP test menu, I have some uh, configurations that I can set. So as we saw in the demo, I can set the color of the left and the right laser as well as the spherical cursor at the end of the laser pointers. And I can also specify if I want the left and the right laser to always be visible uh, with this true or false check mark, or if it's false, only be visible when we are pointing at the menu. The way that this was all implemented starts with a UMG widget blueprint, a user widget. So we're gonna start there. And if we look into the designer, we can see that at an outermost level, we have a, um, a border. This could also have been like a canvas panel. And inside of that, we have a vertical box so that we can stack one, two, three buttons. Each one of these buttons has been assigned some colors and some different states for their normal hovered and pressed state. And if we go into the graph, we can also see that for those buttons, we have on hover behaviors. We are playing a particular sound when all three of them are hovered. And then for the yes and no buttons on press, we are playing a sound and the maybe button on clicked we are playing a sound. And that's just to show off the difference between the two. The difference being that with on press, the sound associated with the yes and no buttons plays immediately as you click or pull the, uh, the trigger on your VR controller. Whereas with the maybe button, because of the on click here, it will trigger when we release the trigger. That's all there is to the user widget. That's the menu proper. 
Uh, unlike in a regular Unreal Engine game where we could just add this menu to the viewport, in a virtual reality experience, we attach the menu to an actor and then we place that actor in the scene. And you saw with my test level that the actor that we have been using is this BP test menu. So we'll hop over to that. Here you can see in the viewport, we have a default scene route and attached to that we have a widget component. We have a Niagara particle system for the left laser and the right laser. And we have a static mesh component for the right cursor and the left cursor. The widget component that, if we search for a widget here, you can see the widget class has been set to my test menu. That was the menu that we just saw a moment ago. That's why we see the menu here within the viewport. For the laser left and right, the Niagara particle system, this is a particle system that came with the Unreal Engine VR template. So uh, a big part of the demo today is leveraging the VR template. Uh, it sets up a bunch of the properties for your project that optimize it for VR. And it also comes with a really great uh, VR pawn uh, pre-made for you that we will be leveraging again for this menu. And it also came with this Niagara system for the, uh, the menu pointer. Um, I modified the Niagara system ever so slightly. I added a user parameter uh, as a linear color. And then I used that in the particle spawn for the color of the laser pointer. So that's just what was allowing me to change the color of the lasers in the, this Niagara system. So that is set for both the left and the right. For the left and the right cursor, uh, you could set those to different static meshes. In my demo here, I have them both set to the sphere that just comes with uh, the engine. Uh, so to see engine content, when you select your static mesh, you can click this little gear and make sure you have show engine content on. And at that point, I was able to see in the engine basic shapes folder, a sphere. The other thing to note about that sphere is that it has been assigned a material of M VR cursor that also came with the, uh, the template, the Unreal Engine VR template, uh, but it's a very simple uh, material graph. Uh, all it is is a uh, emissive color on a material of a surface material with an opaque blend mode. Uh, it's also unlit. Uh, and we are simply supplying it with a emissive color. Uh, the way this came is that that emissive color was set to a constant. I changed it slightly such that I made that into a parameter called emissive color so that I could also change the color of those spherical cursors at the end of my laser beams. Uh, that's all that really goes into sort of the setup for uh, the various components of this menu actor. Again, it's a the parent class for this blueprint is an actor that allows me to place it in the world. Uh, next, we're going to head over to the event graph and see how things are set up. The, uh, the very first thing that happens on event begin play is that we enable input and we set up a mapping context for the enhanced input system. So we go to the player controller, both to enable input, allowing us to interact with this menu and the enhanced input system, we are loading up a input mapping context called test menu. Uh, this is something that I made. You can see it has just two input actions, a menu interact left and a menu interact right. And that those are mapped to the left and the right trigger of the various VR controllers. And if we look at those input actions, we'll just look at one of them because they're the same. They're just both Boolean sort of on and off input actions. So the trigger is either on when it's squeezed or off when it's not. We Set that up. Well, we set this mapping context with a priority of two. Uh, this is so that if you had other interactions in your scene, uh, the priority of two would sort of take priority 
uh, over those other things. So if you had other interactions that were set up to uh, work with the trigger, uh, you can also see on our input action, we have a check mark set to consume lower priority enhanced input mappings. And so, uh, you know, if we have a higher priority, we will consume that input and lower priority uh, input mappings will not receive it. And so we've just done this because this is like a starting menu. You know, we want this to be like the only thing that the, uh, the user is interacting with. After we enable input and set up the input mapping context, uh, we need to get access to uh, two things that are very important, two things that are provided to us from the VR pawn that comes with the Unreal Engine VR template. So let's just take a quick peek over to the VR pawn and see what those two things are. In the VR pawn, we have a motion controller component for the right and the left. Those are going to map to our VR controllers and attached to those, we have what's called a widget interaction component for the right and the left. And this is actually what's going to allow us to interact with widgets. That's why it's called a widget interaction component. Uh, so these interaction components are going to have a world location that matches sort of approximately the pointer finger location of each of the hands. They're also going to have a forward vector that points outwards from that position. And there's going to be, uh, they're going to sort of extend in space forward from that forward vector uh, a certain amount of distance which is called their interaction distance. And so you can see for the, the left and the right uh, widget interaction component, they both have an interaction distance of 500. That means they will allow us to interact with widgets that are 500 Unreal units or closer to us. So anything beyond 500 Unreal units, we will not be able to interact with. Uh, but you could change that value to allow you to interact with widgets that are further away. The only other thing that we need to note about these interaction components is that they have a different value for their pointer index. The right interaction component has a pointer index of one and the left interaction component has a pointer index of zero. And this is going to be important uh, in a moment when we see how we get access to these from our menu. This is done right here after the enabling input and the enhanced input system. We run this function called set widget interaction references. This is something I grabbed from the, um, the menu that was part of the VR template. And what it does is it goes to our player pawn and it gets all the components of type widget interaction component. Those are the components we were just looking at. And as long as we have some of them, we're gonna put them into an array and we're gonna loop through them. And as we loop through them, we're gonna look at that pointer index that we just saw. And we saw that the left interaction component has a pointer index of zero. So as we're looping, when we see that the pointer index is zero, we're going to set a reference variable called widget interaction reference left. And when the pointer index uh, is not zero, in our case, it'll be one, we're going to set another reference variable called widget interaction reference right. So at the end of this loop, we will have set both of those references and we will have a reference to that interaction component. And again, remember, it's really important to understand what these interaction components are doing. They start at the pointer fingers on both of our controllers at our hands and then they extend outwards uh, at a particular forward vector and that forward vector will change as we are pointing our hands in different directions and they will extend a certain number of unreal units away and that's controlled by the interaction distance. Once we have those captured as local variables we're going to do some of our uh, color setup. So remember in when we have this menu placed in a level, we can set the color of the left and the right laser pointers. Uh, those are instance editable variables, specifically these ones right here, this left laser color and right laser color, both set as instant editable. 
And what we're doing here is we are going to our Niagara system, our menu laser left and our menu laser right. That's these two Niagara systems here. And we are setting a Niagara variable, specifically the beam color variable that is the color of the beam of this Niagara system. And so there you are, that's where we're set, setting beam color here, beam color here. We're setting the left color of the left laser Niagara system and the right color to the right Niagara system. And we do a similar thing for our left and right cursors. So we grab the um, left and right cursor and we create a dynamic material instance of it, the material in index zero. If we look at both of those cursors, the element in material zero uh, is the MVR cursor. That's this material here where we created a emissive color parameter. And so then we set that emissive color parameter to the left and the right laser pointer colors. And that's just gonna make it so that those spheres that are at the end of our laser beams are gonna be the same color as the beams. And that's all the begin play work that needs to happen. Next up, we need to actually draw the lasers and the cursors, and that's gonna be done on tick. And so we have a function that I created here called update laser and cursor. And I created the function so that we could use it twice, once for the left widget interaction component and one for the right widget interaction component. And I'm passing in along with those interaction components, the left and the right cursor, the left and the right laser Niagara system, and an instance editable variable called left laser always visible and right laser always visible. And those were these right here, these instance editable uh, features of our blueprint. And that's what's gonna control whether our laser beam's always on or only on when we're pointing at the menu. And so both of those things get called on every tick. Let's see what happens inside of that function. First things first, we, uh, here's the various things that are being passed into our function. You can see I'm making use of the first of them. Uh, the next three, it's not that I'm not using them, it's just that I didn't wanna have a tangle of wires coming off of this input node here. And so I used getters to get things like the uh, widget interaction component, the cursor and the laser. So you'll see me make use of a get component for the widget interaction component, the laser and the cursor throughout. And they're just not wired off of these. The very first thing we do here is we're going to test to see, um, you know, are we in that mode where we always want to uh, show the laser pointer or do we only want to show the laser pointer when we are uh, pointing directly at the menu with one of our two widget interaction components. And so we are oaring that laser always visible with this test from the widget action component called is over hit test visible widget. And, and so what this particular test does is it's gonna return true if our interaction pointer, our interaction component pointer that extends out that interaction distance has overlapped with the menu. And so we are going to follow this true path either if we always want the laser to be visible or if we are currently pointing directly at the menu with one of our uh, widget interaction components. If the branch is false, that means we just wanna hide the laser and the cursor. We don't show anything at all. If that branch is true, we're gonna start off by uh, turning on our laser and our cursor. And I just made a little custom function for this. I set this visible to true. And all this is doing is setting the visibility of both the laser and the cursor. After that, the next thing we have to do is we need to determine the starting point and the ending point for our laser beam. And the ending point for the laser beam is also going to be the point at which we place our spherical cursor. The starting point is easy. It's just the location in world space of the widget interaction component. 
And so for the left and the right hand, this is approximately going to be the, uh, the index finger. And so we just go to the widget interaction component, we ask for the world location, and we set that in a variable called laser start point. Next up, we are going to make use of this same test is over hit test visible widget. Uh, because we could be in one of two situations, right? We're in that either in the situation where we always want the laser to be on, or we're in the situation where we're pointing at the menu and we want the laser to be on. And so if this is true, meaning we are currently pointing at the menu, then the endpoint of the laser is just where our interaction beam, the interaction widget beam intersects with the menu. And to do that, we go to our widget interaction component. And if we look at this collapse graph, we just get the latest hit results impact point. That's just going to give us the point at which this, the line extending out from our interaction component hits the menu. And we set that to our laser end point. Next up, we're just going to go and place the cursor, the static mesh, at that laser endpoint. We're pointing at the menu. Let's put the cursor into the world at that hit location. And then the last thing we do is we're going to go to our laser beam Niagara system and we're going to make use of another one of our user variables here, the point array. And the zeroth position of this point array sets the start of our beam and the first position of the point array sets the end of our beam. And so here we can see we're setting the user point array at position zero, user point array at position one, we're starting the start point for zero, the end point for one. And that is what happens when we are pointing directly at the menu, right? We're going to find where we are hitting the menu with our interaction component beam, the thing that is extending out 500 Unreal units right now from our interaction widget component that's coming off of our fingers that we're sort of pointing out into the world. And we're going to place the cursor at that endpoint and set the laser beam. The only other path that we haven't followed yet is the one where we always want to display the laser, but we are not currently pointing at the menu. And because we're not currently pointing at the menu, we don't have a hit location to set for our endpoint. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our widget interaction component and we're going to get its forward vector. That's the direction that we're pointing our interaction components beam. And we're going to multiply that by its interaction distance. The forward vector has a length of one. And so when we multiply it by the interaction distance, that's going to extend it 500 units out into space. And then we're going to add to that the start point of our laser pointer because that's where we're pointing from. That's it begins at the start point and then we add to that the forward vector multiplied by the interaction distance and that will give us our new endpoint. And after we set the laser endpoint, then all we need to do is hide the cursor. We're not pointing at the menu so we don't need to display that cursor at all. And again, we're going to flow through here to set the starting point and the ending point of the Niagara system. The only thing that's left in our graph is the actual interactions. So if you remember off the hop, we got access to the enhanced input system and we added our input mapping context that gave us access to our left and right triggers for our interact left and our interact right. And here we are using those events. Here's our interact left, here's our interact right. And what we're doing is on started and completed, we are going to our widget interaction component and we are doing the equivalent of a left mouse button click and a left mouse button release. And the same thing is done for the right and the left. And that allows us to actually pull those triggers and click the menu buttons that are part of our widget that we've got here. The only other thing that I want to note is that I had some issues early on uh, with the static mesh that was the cursor. I needed to ensure that the cursor was set to have a collision preset of no collision. 
Otherwise, I was never actually able to determine a hit location because what was happening is that the uh, the end of the widget interaction component was hitting the sphere instead of the menu. And so once I set that to no collision, then I started getting proper hit locations uh, to the widget itself. And so one last flow to what's happening on every tick, because this is the, the most crucial part of the whole system. We check to see if we always want the laser to be visible. Uh, and we or that with if we're pointing directly at the menu. If either of those happens to be true, we're gonna follow this true path. Uh, otherwise, we're just gonna turn off the visibility for both the laser and the cursor. In the true path, we turn on the laser and the cursor. We find the starting point of our laser pointer, which is going to be the world location of whichever interaction component we are looking at. We're going to see if we're pointing at the menu. We're going to find our endpoints, whether we're pointing at the menu or not, one of which is going to be the hit location of the menu. The other one's going to be the sort of the extended endpoint of our interaction component pointer. And then we're either going to place that cursor at the end of the laser or hide it, and then place the starting and ending point of our Niagara system into the user parameter. And that's it, everybody. That's the entire menuing system. It makes use of the VR templates, VR pawn, the fact that we have widget interaction components on our uh, right and left motion controllers is leveraged there. And again, we've got a widget blueprint that we are interacting with that has an event graph to allow us to press or click uh, buttons uh, by way of these input actions for the left and the right triggers. I hope that what I've explained here will allow you to create your own menus that you can use as start menus or permanent fixtures for menus within VR scenes. Um, again, you can see that um, you know these elements can be changed. Earlier on, we saw that the left and the right colors were red and green. I can change those uh, so that you can see, you know, I can make a blue or sort of a purple and a orangey color for the left and the right laser. And I can make it so that they are both always visible uh, regardless of whether or not they are pointing at the menu or not. And we can do one final test run of this system. Here's our final test run. You can see that our laser pointers are pointing off into space regardless of if they're uh, hitting the menu or not. Their colors have been changed to orange and purple. And then here we are with the menu. You can see the spherical pointer cursors at the very end when we interact with the menu. And then when we step off of it, they extend beyond into space, 500 Unreal units. And we can now click all of our buttons. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.